In December of 1987, a French drag queen by the name of Thierry Pola was arrested. He confessed to the killings of 21 women, all of which occurred in a span of just three years. There were a lot of things that made Thierry different from the average serial killer, a major instance being the fact that he had an accomplice, his lover, Jean Thierry Matera. The couple would target elderly women, follow them home, and strike as soon as they unlocked the door to their flats. From there, they would tie the woman up with anything they could find, while demanding valuables and cash. Eventually, Thierry would become so enraged during this process, he would kill the elderly woman by a number of different ways, including strangulation, blunt force trauma, or in one instance, forcing a woman to drink drain cleaner. Thierry Pola was born on November 28, 1963, in a former French colony known as Martinique in the Caribbean. Shortly after his 16-year-old mother Rose gave birth, Thierry's father abandoned them and ran off to France. Thierry was primarily raised by his paternal grandmother after he turned one. All we know about her is that she owned a restaurant on the beach and neglected her grandson. At the age of 10, he moved back in with his mother Rose, who had remarried and had five more children. He didn't fit in with this new family, and had trouble getting along with his half-brothers and half-sisters. Thierry was the black sheep of the family, and his adolescence was chaotic. The instability would only increase as he got older. His mother eventually reconnected with Thierry's biological father, whom had also moved on and had other children. She demanded alimony for taking care of their son, but he refused. Instead, Thierry went to live with him. Around 1980, when Thierry was 17, he entered into the military after suffering academically. He hoped that this could provide the stability and routine that his childhood lacked. However, this didn't last long, because Thierry was subjected to racism and homophobia by his peers. In 1984, Thierry left the army and went to live with his mother in Paris. This is where he got a job at an entertainment venue called Paradis Lata, which introduced him to the world of drag queens. Here is where he met and developed a relationship with 19-year-old Jean Matra. They both shared a passion for entertainment and dressing in drag. The couple eventually moved in together in an apartment near the Laval. The discrimination and social stigmas that Thierry and his partner faced were likely a factor in the substance abuse that soon came. It was also the result of the extravagant party lifestyle the couple aspired to have. Thierry couldn't afford the lavish lifestyle on his own income, but he would do anything to get it. He would go as far as robbing dozens of elderly women and killing 21 of them to cover his tracks. It was easy for the two grown men to push their way into the elderly women's apartments. Authorities would find their belongings scattered, clothes ripped off, feet burned, one woman had a wine bottle smashed over her head. Thierry's first known attack was on November 14, 1982, in Toulouse, while on military leave. At a grocery store, the 19-year-old threatened a 75-year-old woman with a knife and stole 1,400 francs. The woman he robbed had known him prior and was able to tell police exactly who he was. In June of 1983, he was sentenced to two years in prison, time he would never serve because instead he was sent to a marine school. After his first attempt at robbery failed, Thierry decided that he couldn't risk getting caught by police again. Not only did this lead to him targeting the most helpless of victims, elderly women, it led to a killing spree of 21 plus victims. The first wave of murders commenced on October 5th, 1984. 
Thierry and Jean brutally attacked 91-year-old Germa Petito. Because of the severe trauma she suffered and her age, she couldn't remember the details of her attackers. That same evening, the lovers beat and suffocated Anna Pontu with a pillow. For her murder, they acquired a total of 300 francs from her home. Police were able to collect and match fingerprints found at the crime scenes, but at that time, there wasn't a central database. The evidence was essentially useless to police. They had Thierry's fingerprints in Toulouse, on paper, in a file. They had those same fingerprints in a file under an unidentified killer in Paris. What's considered the most cruel murder committed by Thierry was that of 84-year-old Alice Benaim. He forced the elderly woman to drink drain cleaner. The liquid immediately caused chemical burns to her mouth, and once swallowed, burns to the esophagus and stomach. Her death would have been slow and painful. By November of 1984, Thierry Pola had murdered eight elderly women. But as abruptly as the killing started, they stopped. Rumors swirled that the killer was potentially hospitalized, incarcerated, or even dead, none of which was true. The reality was that the murderous couple had gone to live with Thierry's father in Toulouse. While there, the three fought constantly with one another, and their relationships slowly ripped apart. This led to Jean returning to Paris and completely separating from Thierry. Now that Jean was disconnected from the mastermind behind the crimes, he tried to return to a normal life. Thierry continued to live with his father for a little while longer, but ultimately, their arguments gave rise to Thierry returning to Paris as well in December of 1985. He was 22 years old, and his killing spree was far from over. That's what one expert called it. He said, quote, I don't think we can say that he was a serial killer, because a serial killer is a sadistic individual who takes pleasure in killing, who kills for the sake of it, for the pleasure of killing. That wasn't Thierry Paula. He killed for money. One investigator on the case said, quote, He killed like he was going to the bank. I don't think he even realized the horror of what he had done. He attacked old ladies. He killed them. But in fact, he acted as if he was going to get money from the ATM. But he killed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Although Thierry Paolo was killing elderly women left and right, he aspired to have a different type of lifestyle on the surface. He wanted to be known and admired by his peers. By anyone, really. To his friends and acquaintances, Thierry could be incredibly empathetic and kind to those around him. No one suspected that this charismatic, loving man was actually a cold-blooded killer. Thierry was living a double life. On one side, he was throwing extravagant parties, living in a hotel, making friends. On the other, he was killing helpless women for the ability to have those experiences. In August of 1986, Thierry Pola was arrested, but it wasn't for any murders. He had assaulted one of his drug dealers with a baseball bat and threatened him with a gun. All because he wasn't happy with the quality of drugs the dealer had sold him. The dealer filed a complaint against Thierry, probably excluding the fact that he sold drugs in the first place. In January the next year, Thierry was sentenced to 16 months in prison. His fingerprints were taken for a second time. Thierry was incarcerated for a second time. But still, police didn't cross-reference the fingerprints found at the crime scenes. One year and one month later, 
Thierry was released from prison. What would have been a happy moment for him was soon met with what at that time was a death sentence. Thierry had contracted the HIV virus, which would later develop into AIDS. Knowing that his time left on Earth was short, his behavior became increasingly chaotic and impulsive. He began throwing extravagant parties that he couldn't afford, paying for them with stolen credit cards and checks from his victims. He was starting to become careless. Two months after his release from prison, on the 25th of November, he attacked two women in one day. The first was 79-year-old Rachel Cohen. She was suffocated to death like most of his other victims. The second victim was 79-year-old Berta Fenaltari, whom he strangled and left for dead. Two days later, Thierry strangled what is presumed his last victim, Genevieve Jomont. What led to Thierry's downfall is the resilience of one woman, the woman he had strangled and left for dead, Berta Fenaltari who screamed so loud during the attack that the concierge came running up to help. Berta and a neighbor who had seen Thierry escaping described his appearance to a sketch artist. On November 28th, the sketch was broadcasted and printed everywhere in Paris. That same evening, Thierry threw his biggest party yet for his 24th birthday. The celebration was held at a fancy restaurant with 30 people in attendance, including his lawyer. The total cost amounted to 14,500 francs, which would be around 17,000 US dollars today. His celebrations continued the following two days. On the 29th, he invited 20 people to a restaurant in Pigala, the night of November 30th, he threw a party at a nightclub, and this would be his last night of freedom. The next day, as Thierry was strolling down the street, a police officer approached him. Thierry matched the very unique portrait of the monster of Montmartre. To get Thierry to confess to having an accomplice in the murders, investigators devised a plan. One investigator who was interviewing Thierry hid the drain cleaner that was used to kill Alice Benayim under the table the two were sat at. Thierry claimed that he didn't remember the details of Alice's murder, dodging questions about the details of all the killings. The investigator then said, quote, Really, it would be good if you remember. There were two of you. He then pulled out the drain cleaner liquid set it on the table, and said, quote, And this? What is this? Thierry responded, quote, It's not mine. That's Jean Matera's. As simple as that, police were given the name of his accomplice. Thierry Pola confessed to 21 murders, but police could only charge him for 18. Thierry began to tell police everything they needed to know. At this point, he had nothing to lose, and wanted to confess to all the terrible things he had done before looking into the face of death. Jean Thierry Matera was arrested and charged with eight murders he was involved in prior to the couple's split. During his trial, Jean claimed that he didn't murder anyone, he was just there to steal the victim's belongings. It was Thierry who tortured and killed the helpless women. When Jean told this to the court, Thierry let out a hysterical laugh that shocked Jean's lawyer. Thierry then pointed all the blame directly at Jean. He claimed that he had done nothing, that it was his ex-lover who committed the killings. This was the complete opposite of what he confessed to police initially. Nothing came of this, of course, because the evidence supporting Thierry as the mastermind was overwhelming, and he had committed eight more murders after the split with Jean. The process of acquiring justice for one victim of murder is lengthy. 
but that of 18 victims would take years and years. Thierry Pola didn't have that much time left. On April 17, 1989, Thierry died of AIDS in the hospital wing of a prison. He was just 25 years old. Thierry Pola died before he could ever be brought to justice. The court was left with 22-year-old Jean Matura, who received a life sentence for the murders of eight elderly women. In January of 2009, he was released from prison after serving just 21 years. Although Thierry was never tried for his killing spree, he's still remembered in Paris today. One detective said, quote, I dare say I think he was in complete denial of all human values. He saw other people as just animals. He had an animalistic side to him, what we would call dehumanization. How can you kill a granny without thinking about what she stands for? He had a savage side to him, devoid of all forms of humanity. A forensic psychologist said this about Thierry, quote, he was a vile being, a real monster, and it seemed like there was some kind of divine justice because he perished in the worst circumstances. And it appeared as if the heavens, in their fury, had wanted to show that he had no place in humankind.